Hello everyone, so today I'm just going to be drawing a quick character sheet for my OC Sydney. And I actually forgot to film footage for the first bit, so that's just going to be a time lapse for now. I know, I'm sorry, I always, I always forget. Like, I don't know what it is about filming that I always forget. I mean, it's, it's literally so important <laughs> for videos, you know, but I constantly forget. But anyway, for the majority of this drawing, by the way, I am going to be using the Artemis HB brush. You can find it on Clip Studio Paint Assets. It's really great. I've been using it ever since I saw like Lehood Art use it and it, it just does magic for sketches because it, it just for real feels like a, a real pencil. So this character that I'm drawing, if you don't know her yet, this is Sydney. She's been my mascot for like a couple of years now I think. I think I made her back in 2020. I didn't make her to be my mascot because technically I already have a character for that but um, she just kind of became my mascot. Originally I made her to be the main character in a webtoon I wanted to make. Unfortunately that never came alive because I gave up on the webtoon. And honestly I gave up because like, I don't even know how to draw backgrounds. I've just been telling myself that I'm probably not built to make a webtoon because webtoon authors, like, not only have to be the artist, but also the writer and the editor and all that. And as much as I love to create my silly little stories, I just, I don't have the energy to, like, flesh out those stories for a webtoon because, you know, if it's a badly written story, it's not it's not worth it right so i've just been reserving the characters that i made for it for something else i made like maybe five of them and i don't know what i'm gonna do with them maybe an animation since i'm learning how to animate in the future if i get into game dev maybe a visual novel i don't know i don't know yet i don't know what their function is but for the time being i have been trying to figure out their main outfits and this is sydney's main outfit I actually designed this outfit last year and it's supposed to have a jacket but when I made the jacket I kind of just scribbled like I scribbled the design of the jacket and it honestly makes no like practical sense and when I was drawing this I was too lazy to figure it out <laughs> so I just left it out so her silhouette's looking a tad bit boring at the moment but I will work on that in the future so like I mentioned before Sydney has kind of become my mascot. She's the one that I use for like my profile pictures. She's my YouTube profile picture and she's kind of become the character that people know me, know me by. And I didn't originally mean for her to be a self insert, but she just kind of ended up that way. You know, I feel like anytime an artist or person designs a character, they just naturally put, you know, like sprinkle a little bit of themselves into that character. And that's what I did here. And honestly, like, I just really vibed with her look. I wish I looked like her. And when I made her, I did just like want her to be Asian because I am Asian. And um, technically, she's supposed to be half alien, half human with her human side being Asian. And if you're wondering like, wait, like where did aliens come from? I know like it's confusing because that's how my story was but you're just gonna stay confused because I'm not gonna explain it. Anyway, I wanted her to be Asian and for the longest time I've been stalling on what specific type of Southeast Asian she would be because I am Southeast Asian. I was like, I want her to be Southeast Asian. And then I hovered over Chinese for a little bit and I hovered over Chinese for a little bit. But then when I was drawing the sheet, actually, I was like, wait, hold on. Why don't I just make her Filipino? You know, she's been my profile picture and mascot for a while and basically a self insert. And I'm Filipino, so why not make her Filipino? So yeah, that's like done and set in stone now. She is Filipino. Sydney is Filipino. And so now my next mission is to find a Filipino last name that matches her name or goes with it. Because let's be real, Sydney is not a Filipino name. If you just, if you just heard Sydney, you would not think, hey, is she Filipino? You know, I could just hear my family like kind of struggling to say her name. Oi, Sydney, Sydney, Sydney. 
you know, whatever, like how Filipinos would say Sydney. It's just, it's just not a Filipino name. And there's, there's probably Filipino Sydneys out there, but I, I've, I haven't met one personally, but um, I've been searching and I thought of like um, Sydney Pagia, because I have a friend whose last name is Pagia, Sydney Pagia or Sydney Padilla. And for some reason, I'm leaning toward more like three syllable last names. And honestly, I'm not too big on the meaning of names, so that's not something I'm targeting specifically. But it would be nice if it if it meant something that matched her and she's a very colorful character. So I'm on the hunt for that. Um, if you have any ideas, drop them down and I will take them into consideration. And Sydney, she's basically very, very kid core themed. I actually designed her specifically after that aesthetic. You know, like uh, primary colors, toy core, care bears, beads, like friendship bracelets, like stuff like that. And she holds like a very special place in my heart because she's basically the character that helped me find my style. When I first created her, she didn't have an outfit yet. Um, I just knew that I really vibed with this character. And when I finally decided to make this outfit, this outfit that I'm drawing right here, um, I went with toy core and kid core and I was like, wow, I really love working with these colors. And from then on, that's just like what set off this like amazing journey into the primary color art style that I currently have and that I want to continue solidifying into my art. So when I was working on her backside, I realized that I've never drawn a character's backside before, which is crazy to think about considering how many years <laughs> I've been drawing and that I call myself a character designer, but I've, I've never drawn the back of a character. Like what? What have I been doing this entire time? But because this is uh, for my character design portfolio in my university class, then I had to do a turnaround. And let's be real, you could hardly call this a turnaround. It's just two angles. A character turnaround, like some people do like eight point turnaround for like animation. And I'm like, what are you, a magician? Like, I mean, I could probably do it. I haven't tried. So I also realized that I didn't know how to draw a, uh, a, a someone's cakes from the backside. I don't want to say it because of YouTube in case. I don't know how strict YouTube is, but I'm not going to risk it. But basically, I, I had to look up like references of like someone's behind, you know, like wearing jeans. So I was like, wait, like I actually, I don't know how to draw this in a way where it doesn't look weird. And I'm like, oh, like I was like really struggling because it looked weird. When I was drawing this, I was in call with um, my artist friend, Kals. And I was like, Kals, like how do I, how do I draw someone's cakes from the back? Like, you know, and I was asking her for tips. And um, there was a lot about this where I was like, oh, like, I didn't realize that this changes when you're viewing someone from the back, like um, the angles of certain things. And I was like, wow, I need to do some figure drawings. And I feel like doing this and honestly, just being in um, college classes recently in animation classes has made me realize just how, to, how out of touch I am with the fundamentals of drawing sometimes because I've been so comfortable in this little social media bubble that I've been in where I just chug out content, chug out art and post it and people will like it even if it's not like anatomically correct or anything like that. And as much as I love that art culture, um, I do think it is still important to brush up on my skills, study up on art again. And a uh, silly old me, I, I was too lazy. So I didn't look up a reference on how to draw the back of shoes. And so this entire drawing of the shoes on the backside completely improvised from my memory. I don't like I was just doing whatever, you know, because I'm actually like, like I mentioned before, I was making this for my class because I'm in a class where my final is to have a portfolio of 10 images that I drew this year. Uh, I, I was kind of struggling to include 10 pictures and so I was like let me just um let me just redraw Sydney's design and maybe tweak it a little bit so that and that's why like 
this piece doesn't look as finished. It's still very, um, it's still very sketchy. It's basically a colored sketch, but that's because I, I needed to do it rather quickly. I needed to finish it in in one sitting. And um, once again, I'm returning to this um, boute because it just looked weird. But I, you know, I, I, luckily I did find a point where I was like, okay, this looks decent. Doesn't look too weird. Um, I will just leave it alone. So I don't want her to look flat, but I also don't want her to look like she got a, a BBL. You no, know, I just want her to look like she has a, a natural, natural cakes for the time being. <laughs> and uh, thank goodness for Liquify because I, I was really, really struggling with this. So going back to when I talked about touching up on fundamentals of drawing again, I think next semester I'm going to take a comparative anatomy class, which sounds very intimidating and daunting because anatomy is something that I've been avoiding, like actually studying for a really long time because I was like, it just, it just seems really scary. And, but it's like, it's like the most important part about being a character artist is to know correct anatomy right and for the longest i've been very insecure about the way i draw bodies and basically i've survived all these years on drawing bodies just by copying how other people draw bodies or just through observational drawing i've never actually taken the time to learn how muscles and bones work on the human body and um surprisingly on this drawing i didn't struggle as much as i thought i would with the backside i did struggle with the hand though because i was like wait like how how is this gonna look and i tried to mess around with it without looking at a reference at first because i'm stubborn and i'm the type of person that is like i want to see if i could figure this out by myself without any help and then if i can't figure it out then i finally look up a reference even though i should really just look up a reference to begin with and um, I have a big mirror beside me. So I, you know, at one point I finally just turned around and tried to see what my hand looked like if I was putting my hand on my hip, you know, from the, from the backside. And I was like, wow, okay, I had it all wrong. And so I finally, like, look how, see how fast it took me to draw a hand that looked correct versus when I was just drawing by myself without, without reference. I just, I really need to stop being that stubborn. But that is basically the line work for this design. It's just a very rough sketch and it's, I'm going to color it later. But for now, I'm going to head into the sponsor segment of this video where I'm going to eat some snacks from Sakura Ko and Tokyo Treat. So Tokyo Treat is a monthly subscription snack box for Japanese snacks. This is my third month trying them out and I have honestly enjoyed it so much. This is the box for May and I think it is the strongest one so far. The box is once again Sakura theme and there's always a guaranteed flavored Kit Kat and ramen in every month's box. And this month has so many good snacks and it was very hard to choose, but here are a few of my favorites. So first up, is the Kit Kats. I have to talk about the Kit Kats because these came in super nice packaging and I was really excited about the banana caramel flavor. So these actually tasted a bit more like banana than they do caramel, but they are nonetheless still very, very good. There's no difference between the different colored packaging. They're just like that to look nice. I was also really excited when I saw the Ghana branding because from last month's box, I really, really loved the Ghana truffles. And this time the truffles were matcha flavored with chocolate inside. And oh my God, I just love these so much. I finished them very quickly that I almost didn't share with my sister. There are also these spring potato chips that I ended up really, really liking. They are what you expect potato chips to taste like, which is of course salty, but they also have a hint of sweetness because of the spring theme. And it just went so well together, in my opinion, at least. And lastly, hopefully I'm saying this right, the Umaibo Mentaiko, which is basically a corn snack that is like Doremon branded. These really reminded me of these corn snacks that I would get from the Asian store when I was younger. So I ended up really liking them. 
Now, Sakurako is Tokyo Treat's sister company that has more traditional and authentic snacks from Japan. Every box has a mini print that I've actually started to look forward to and also one piece of tableware and you are guaranteed to get tea. May's theme is Moonlit Sakura and here are some of my favorites. So there was this red bean paste bread that I just gobbled up. I think it's my most favorite thing out of these two boxes for this month. The bread was really soft and the red bean paste or ogura paste like really really complimented it. And then there was this ume salt and vinegar senbei I think which I didn't think I would like because of the vinegar but I ended up really really liking it. The, the taste is actually quite familiar but I can't pinpoint exactly where I've tasted it before. There is also this very very pretty strawberry cake. This cake had a very strong strawberry flavor and it just went very well together. This month's tableware is a Sakura tea glass which has the Sakura Co brand on it. It's just a small little tea glass that I will probably be using when I try out their tea in the future. And that's it. And I'm not just saying this because this is sponsored but I really think these two boxes are the best so far that I have tried. Once again, if you're interested in getting your own box, check out the description for links to a $5 discount off your first purchase. Also, Soccer Co. is having a promo where you can get extra goodies in your box, so go check that out. So thank you so much to Tokyo Retreat and Soccer Co. for sponsoring me these past three months. I am very, very grateful. So moving on to coloring, I'm just getting down my color scheme here and color picking from this reference picture, which is the first one, um, which is my first reference of when I designed this outfit. And really, I should have like a color set within CSP for this, but I don't for some reason. I'm probably too lazy to make it. I, I say it so many times, but I'm just really too lazy to do a lot of stuff that would probably make my life a lot easier. But that's just me being an irresponsible human being. So my friend Cal's actually introduced this tool to me called the Quick Fill Tool on Clip Studio Paint because apparently Clip Studio doesn't have this like built in already and it has made filling in flats like 10 times easier because filling in flats is a step that I dread and like look how easy it is like I don't I don't have to do anything else other than select the parts I want to fill and I can't believe I wasn't using this like a long time ago. I should have been using it so long ago and made my life much much easier. And I also think that it's just very satisfying to see someone use it which is why um, I'm actually including the coloring segment in this video because some of you may have noticed, but I almost like never or very rarely include the filling in flat section in my videos because I just hate like watching it. I never know what to talk about in those segments because I'm just like, what am I supposed to say? Like, ooh, look at me. I'm uh, I'm filling in the colors. I'm filling in the pants and the shoes and the shirt. Like, you know, is that what I'm supposed to say? Like, I don't know what to talk about. But here I'm just gushing about how easy it looks. And honestly, at this point, actually, when I was filling in the shirt, I kind of had like a revelation where I was like, wow, I kind of snapped with this color design because the yellow matches her skin tone very well. And then the jeans, uh, the blue of the jeans matches the yellow undertones of her skin. And, you know, her hair also matches her skin very well. And uh, I had to go back and redo her face because her eyes were just bothering me for some reason. Like the way I first drew them, it it didn't seem like Sydney to me. So I messed around with her face a bit more to try to get her eyes to look like how, how I wanted them to. And I was actually originally just going to let this piece be only flats and I would just color the lines. But I ended up still doing some shading and some overpainting because I wanted this to be very, very quick. I didn't want to do too much work on it because I didn't want to waste my own time. But I have a problem when it comes to art where I do not know when to just let a piece be. And so I was like, ah, like I can't help it. I must add shading. And so I did. And this is also one of those like satisfying parts, in my opinion, where I was like, 
wow i kind of snapped with this character design because like when i filled in the blue of her hair i was like oh my gosh like look it just like it makes her pop so much and um when i was editing this actually i was so bothered by how much my hand would cover the screen because of the angle that i chose when i was recording this i should have angled it a bit more so that you could see like past my hand but sometimes I don't like to angle my footage because then the drawing will look distorted a bit because of the way it's getting stretched from um, the viewing angle. But it's, it's making me want to try um, doing a draw with me commentary over a screen recording rather than a recording of my hands. But I don't know, some people might get upset by that. So. I will let you guys um, tell me in the comments. Maybe I'll do a poll on it in the community tab. But for now, um, I will just keep screen recordings to Patreon because I have been uploading um, recordings of my screen in real time to Patreon. So like this one it took me around maybe a couple hours. So a piece that takes me like around a couple of hours, I record that um on my screen and and then i upload it on youtube real time i don't edit it at all and i just upload that to patrons who who want to see me work in real time so if you're interested in that you can get access to those real time screen recordings just for the three dollar tier and a bit into coloring this i actually like i was a bit bothered by how short her top got because her top is supposed to be yellow denim because when I was looking through Pinterest, I remember seeing this denim top that I thought really looked nice, but you know, denim is blue. And I was like, wait, can denim be different colors? And I was just like, oh, who cares? Whatever, let's go for it. And so I made, um, made her have yellow denim. And the way I drew this initially is that it, it was too short, or I think I made her waist like shorter in just how I drew the body because Compared to the reference, I definitely draw bodies a, a lot differently. Um, I draw legs shorter now, and I apparently draw the waist shorter. And Sydney isn't supposed to be that tall. She's supposed to be like my height or a little taller because um, I'm like 5'2", five, 5'3", five, and I'm thinking of making her like maybe 5'4", five, or 5'5", five, five, which is actually like average, I guess, for, for women, but whatever. And for her jeans, um, I made them have like embroidery of like stars and hearts and butterflies. Although in the future, I may scrap the butterflies because to be honest, I don't actually like butterflies that much. I think they look cool, but I don't really like to draw them. I don't know if they match Sydney that much because in, in the reference picture, I don't know if you saw, but her earrings are actually supposed to be butterflies but then i changed it to just rings because i just didn't like to draw butterflies and of course she's gonna have ripped jeans because she's um personality wise pretty chaotic person and honestly i don't know what came over me when i designed these socks but i very very much like these socks these shoes though i realized like the fault in um the design when i was working on these shoes um I just based them off these Converse that I saw on Pinterest that had beads on the laces. But this is a very, very rough like concept and character sheet. So I drew the beads very lazily and, and yeah. And when the day comes where I have to draw these shoes in a detailed manner, I'm going to hate myself because I'm going to look at this reference sheet and be like, wait, what's going on here? But, you know, like I'm not I'm not doing myself any favors by being lazy right now, but that is for future me to deal with. I also realized that I didn't know what the backside of her jeans were supposed to look like. I was thinking like maybe um, one of her pockets has a star embroidered on it. I thought about adding some color, but I was like, nah, it looks kind of weird. I'll just leave that there. And of course, possibly some stitching because Y'all know how much I love stitching. And she's supposed to have like this chain hanging on the side of her jeans also. I really do need to add to this character sheet though when I have more time to work on it because, because I really wanna flesh out and draw some zoomed in versions of her accessories like her, her S necklace, which she's supposed to 
match with with my other characters because her best friends are supposed to be my other characters Jules and Isabella and they're all supposed to have these necklaces that are matching with each other with the first letter of their names and Sydney also has this beaded necklace and she has bracelets one of them is supposed to say Sid in um, the beads and then of course the beads on her shoes I need to zoom in on those and really decide what they're gonna say if they are gonna say stuff or if they're just gonna be colored beads with no letters and of course her belt like there's a lot I still need to flesh out in this design but with this character sheet I didn't have a lot of time to be very very detailed with it because it, it was just for a class assignment and once again her face was bothering me I just felt like she didn't look like how I want Sydney to look so I went in there and just fixed a lot of the things that were bothering me, like her eyes and her eyebrows, I think. And for now, I'm running out of things to say. And that is pretty much it for the video. I, I don't know what else to say. It's a pretty quick video. Hopefully the next one will be more focused and has an actual topic that I want to talk about. Who knows? Maybe it'll be another tutorial. Who knows what it will be. But I think I'm finished with my sponsors for the most part and I'm, I'm looking forward to just kind of making videos at my own pace and I hope you guys are looking forward to that too. But unfortunately that also means that I might start to work slower and um, upload less but hopefully the videos will be higher quality because I'm able to work at my own pace. So look forward to that and before I go I just want to say Thank you for making it this far into the video. Be sure to check out my Patreon if you haven't already because I do have a monthly sticker club over there. And yeah, just thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. So see you next time. Goodbye.